Good morning, and welcome to the worship of God at Fairview United Church of Christ. What a good-looking, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed crowd we've got today. It's good to see all of you here today. A couple of announcements. Um, just as a reminder, please share those YouTube Sunday School lessons, the Bibles, the uh, music, the, the sermons. If you know of anybody that wants them, just let them know that those are up on our Facebook page, and they're also on my YouTube channel. So if, if, uh, if you get to my YouTube channel and you want to be notified, if you subscribe, you won't get any, I, I won't send you any ads or anything, but you will be notified when something is uploaded. So just a little thing there. And if you know of anybody that, would, that doesn't have access to internet, but would like a DVD recording of the service, let us know. We've got a couple of players that we can give and then those just open up and you can watch the service on those. Thank you for your ideas on how we can be reaching out to other people in these extraordinary times. Are there other announcements this morning? We've had some birthdays. Russell had a birthday on July the 9th and then Mia Hull has a birthday on the 13th. Also Gavin Leertz has a birthday on the 13th. Janet and Clark have an anniversary on the 11th, and John and Joanne have a birth, uh, an anniversary on the 17th. Is this 20 or 21? 21, okay. So we need to sing happy birthday and happy anniversary, please. I, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> Here, just, sh just shout. You know what? You want me to play happy birthday? Okay. All right. open with prayer. Holy God, as we stand in awe of your presence this morning, we invite you to be present among us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy God, we declare that we love you. Thank you that you have made the way of love known through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would reveal this great love to all of us today as we gather in worship. Lead us by your Spirit to praise you. May our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and our mouths proclaim your everlasting greatness. In the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Today's call to worship is from Psalm 65. Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You care for the soil and water it. You enrich it abundantly. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. Now, 
The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. Our opening hymn is number 272, The Solid Rock. I'm going to talk about flowers. Is that okay? We talk about flowers? All right. So uh, these are, um, I've, I've heard them called, I'm going to pronounce this very clearly, ditch lilies. Okay. Just, just so there's no ambiguity there. Ditch lilies. And uh, that's because a lot of times they grow along the side of the road. Have you ever seen these before growing on the side of the road? They're really pretty. You've seen those? Yeah. Well, oh, do you like orange? You like that pretty color? Well, well, maybe you should take these home after church. Would you like to do that? Okay. You take these home, okay? And uh, sometimes you see them growing beside the road, and a lawn, or those big lawnmowers come along and mow them off so you don't see the flowers, but then the next year they come back. Yeah, and then sometimes it's really, really dry, and they kind of get all brown and crusty, but then the next year they come back, and you know why? Because they have roots. You know what roots are that goes in the ground? And when you come to church, and when you read the Bible, and when you pray to God, we grow our roots down deep. Our roots are down deep, so when hard times come, we don't ever have to worry because we are going to have the peace of Jesus Christ in our hearts. And that's what happens when we pray, when we read the Bible, when we pray together as a family, and uh, when we ask Jesus to help us, he grows our faith just like these, plow these flowers have roots. So no matter what happens to us, we don't have to worry. Even though we do go through hard times, nothing's going to take us away from Jesus. All right? So can you take these, you want to take these flowers home? But I'll leave them up here so we can look at them during church and then you come get them and take them home. All right. It was flowers or cookie monster and she chose flowers. So that's all. This is, the, this is a great opportunity to do puppetry because nobody can see your mouth move. All right. I've got a little piece of music here. This is a, there's a boy that has, a young man that has a YouTube channel. His name is Timothy Gondola, and he's a church musician, but he's a wonderful arranger. And I subscribe to his YouTube channel, 
And as part of the subscription, I can download his transcription. So this is his arrangement of Amazing Grace. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 9 and verses 18 to 23. It's one of the parables of Jesus Christ. The first part he, te he teaches the parable and the second part he tells us what the parable means. And I find that on page 1392. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around Him that He got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. And then He told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And moving ahead to verse 18. Jesus says, Let's listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed fell, falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. And this is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy God, I pray now that I may decrease, that you may increase. Send your Holy Spirit to guide our words and our meditations, that we may speak only the truth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We talked a couple of Sundays ago, three or four Sundays ago, about precious substances. 
gold and, and platinum and iridium and things like that. When you think of precious substances or valuable substances, what's the first thing you think of? You think of gold, diamonds. Anybody think of diamonds? Now, the ladies are nodding, but guys didn't think of diamonds. They thought of gold. Um, diamonds, the very rare blue diamonds, are up to $11,000 per carat. And a carat, C-A-R-A-T, is two-tenths of a gram. And a gram weighs as much as a small paper clip. So that's not a very, that's, not, that's a pretty expensive paper clip if you have a paper clip made out of blue diamond. Gold this morning was $1,804. $1,804 per ounce. So that's only $64 for a gram. So you could get a solid gold paper clip for only $64 today. I don't have one, but plutonium on the other hand. Now that's the essential ingredient in nuclear weapons. If you wanted a plutonium paper clip, you would have to pay $4,000. But if you want an antimatter paper clip, every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth would have to work for an entire year with no breaks because an antimatter paper clip weighing one gram would cost $62.5 trillion. But what's more valuable than that? What's more valuable than gold and diamonds and plutonium and antimatter? Soil. Soil. And I'm not just talking about the expensive soil in eastern Brown County. I'm talking about the soil farmland. This is valuable. This is rare. It is precious. And it's precious because our lives depend upon it. We can live without antimatter. We can live without plutonium. We can live without gold and diamonds. But we cannot live without soil. And soil makes up less than 0.00001% of the Earth's mass. And only about 11% of the Earth's surface is suitable for farming. So not only do we have to have soil, it's rare. And what about supply and demand? What happens when you need something? What happens to the price? It goes up. So we could say, because soil is rare, it's precious, and we've got to have it. Soil is priceless. Now think of this. God uses the most precious substance in the world to make you and me. Our first parent, Adam, his name means soil. Adama means of the soil. So God reached down into that precious substance that is absolutely priceless and used that substance to make people, to make you and me, to make living things. Now, this understanding of soil sheds some light on what it means to be humble. Because the word humble means to be near the soil. Micah 6 8 says, What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So, what if we understood the word humble to mean not that we make ourselves feel worthless and less, but rather we are made of that priceless soil, the most priceless, precious substance. In creation, God chose that to make us. We are priceless to God. That's how valuable we are to God. So with that knowledge, being humble means we lie down in peace at the foot of the throne and just bask in God's love for us. And just bask in that peace of Jesus Christ that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. God put these immortal souls into our bodies that He made out of the most precious substance in creation. 
Now, as people in an agricultural community here in Kansas, we understand, we actually have a special understanding of Jesus' farming parables. More so, I think, than people who have never been on a farm or never understood what it means to be a farmer. We live in Kansas. We know how dependent our lives are and how the lives of every other creature are upon soil. Now, at first glance, Jesus' parable may seem to be about seeds, but it's more about the soil. Jesus explains that the seed represents the kingdom of heaven, or the gospel, the good news of the gospel, but the seed in Jesus' parable is all the same. It's all the same seed because there's only one gospel, there's only one kingdom of heaven. What differs in Jesus' parable are the types of ground on which the seed falls. It's all the same gospel, it's all the same kingdom of heaven, the types of soil in which the seed is sown are what differ. Now we've already talked about how precious and rare soil is. We've got to have it. And it's rare. And Jesus tells us in the parable the different types of soil represent the way in which the good news of the kingdom of heaven is received. Now the temptation might be to listen to this parable and think that Jesus is talking about Oh, those other people out there. And we might think he's saying, well, some people won't be able to hear the good news. And some people will turn away from God when they get under stress. And some people will give up their Christian values and they will give in to the ways of the secular world. But a precious few will receive the gospel and they will bear fruit for the kingdom. And that's a way of understanding Jesus' parable, but it's not all of Jesus' parable. That's just a very narrow understanding of Jesus' parable. This is where we need to be humble before God. As in, we need to remember that we are made of that precious substance, soil. And just as one field, one farming field, has many different types of soil within that field, so our hearts have many different types of soil for receiving the seeds of the Gospel. You know, sometimes, we don't listen to God. Or, no, I will use I statements here because I'm sure you always listen to God. So I'm going to own this. Sometimes I don't listen to God. Now, if you've ever not listened to God, okay. But I'm, I'm just going to use I statements for that. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't listen to God. And that is when my heart has hard, stony pavement. Sometimes I rebel against God. I don't know about you. Sometimes I do. And something happens that is so painful or frightening that I forget about the peace of Jesus Christ. I forget about my faith for a little bit. Okay, that is when we have rocky soil in our hearts. There's some rocks in there. Sometimes we get distracted. We give more love to something in the world than we do to Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I statement. Sometimes I get distracted. And I give my love to things in the world more than I give to Jesus Christ. And that's when the thorns in Jesus' parable, that's when the thorns choke out the good news of the Gospel. But it's all in my heart. And sometimes there's good soil. Sometimes there's good soil, and through the grace of Jesus Christ, those seeds of the kingdom take root, and they make nice deep roots. And they bear fruit for the kingdom of God. But all of those things happen within the same field that is our heart. It all happens within the same field of our life. We are a combination, all of us, of rocky pathways, of rocky soil, of thorny soil, and of good soil. We are a combination. And our ongoing redemption through Jesus Christ is a continual reclamation of soil in our hearts. Now, a good farmer would never plant the same crop in the field year after year after year. The farmer is going to rotate the crop is going to enrich the soil. And it's an ongoing process to keep that soil healthy over time, isn't it? When we are saved, 
by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, when we are saved, that process of redeeming the soil of our heart begins. And so Jesus gets in there and He starts to break up the hard pathways. And He starts to take out the rocks. And He starts to take out the thorns. And and when there's good soil, He enriches that soil so that it gets even stronger to bear fruit, to, to receive the seeds of the kingdom. But it is an ongoing process. It's not a one-time process. Like that song goes, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. And the soil that Jesus needs to redeem is not in those people out there, but it's right in here. No matter how long we've been Christ followers, no matter how long we've been reading the Scriptures and, and inviting Jesus into our hearts, there's always a deeper level. There's always a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. He's always inviting us deeper and deeper and deeper into the life of God. Because there's always soil that needs to be redeemed within us. And it's because soil, real soil, is too precious and it's too rare ever to be abandoned. And all soil can grow a crop given the right kind of care. And so we find in this a, a, another parable for our redemption in Jesus Christ, our own path to salvation through Jesus Christ in the way that farmers irrigate a field that contains many different soil types. I did a little bit of reading on irrigation. And there's a wonderful metaphor for life in Christ. Because all the plants in a field, if you've got corn or beans, the plants use water all at the same rate. Okay, the plants don't take up water at different rates, right? Am I... So if you've got corn, it's all going to take up the water at the same rate. It doesn't matter what kind of soil you have. Just like the seeds of the kingdom in Jesus' parable. They're all the same seed. It's all kingdom seed. It's all gospel seed. What needs to be treated differently in the field, though, is the soil when you're irrigating. So sandy soil, if you've got soil that's mostly sand, it drains water very quickly. Now it doesn't mean that you need to dump a whole bunch of water right on it. What you have to do is you have to water it frequently in smaller amounts because it'll drain away otherwise. So you've got to water that sandy soil frequently in smaller amounts. Now that's like those times in our lives when we're in the middle of a stressful time. We've got sickness in our family. We've got, we've got a loved one who's uh, taking cancer treatments. We've got a loved one who we're worried about. We're worried about our own health. We're worried about what's going on in our world. This is a sandy soil time in history. And so what we need are frequent reminders that Jesus loves me, this I know. This is not the time for deep theological debates. This is time for frequent prayer, frequent reminders that we are God's and God is with us, you know, just to keep us going through the day. Frequent prayer, frequent reassurance that God is with us. And this, is, this is keeping the crop going through these sandy times. Now, another type of soil is silt. Deep silt. That, now, that holds a lot of water. It's full of nutrients but it's very easily eroded if you get a lot of water. Clay. Now, clay holds a lot of water, but it's very difficult to aerate. Very, very, very difficult to drain. It stays wet a long time. Now, this can be like when we have a deep, unshakable faith. Like clay soil. We're grounded in the teachings of Jesus Christ. We're grounded in the tradition of worship but maybe we're a little slow to forgive. Maybe our faith is so deep and heavy and grounded that maybe it's hard to welcome a new idea, welcome a new way of worshiping, welcome a new song. That's like the heavy soil. So what we need is a balance of soil. We need a balance of the sandy soil, the silt soil, the clay soil, and that is called Loam soil, L-O-A-M. And that's what everybody wants. Because it's, it's the best of all worlds. It's easy to aerate. It drains well, but not too quickly. It's full of nutrients. 
and plants can push their roots down into it and they can grow. And so in the same way, we need a balanced loam soil in our hearts. So that's why Jesus is constantly working to balance our hearts so that we can grow the seeds of the kingdom of God in our hearts. We're a combination of soil types. Just like fields are a combination of soil types. This shouldn't surprise us. Even in our backyards, we have different kinds of soil. My own backyard, depending on where I dig, I've got some spots that are really good. Would be really good for gardening if I garden. Loam soil, it's very nice. But right next to it is where they put the laterals in. And so that's mostly clay. It's just real smeary, heavy stuff. And then when I was digging holes for the anchor legs of windmills in my backyard, I dug down about four and a half feet and I struck broken glass and diapers. You never know what you're going to find. One of the tenants, one of the previous tenants in my house, many decades ago, apparently, buried dirty diapers in the backyard. So just so you know, they are not as biodegradable as you might think. They, they stick around. But what a, m a wonderful metaphor for the combination of soil that's in our hearts. Good soil. We've got good soil in there and it bears fruit for the Kingdom of God. It bears fruit for God. It, 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 the, the seeds of the Gospel are in there and they are growing. But there's also soil that's heavy. Heavy soil from trauma, from sorrow, from abuse. There might be weak soil from being neglected. Or there might be soil that's filled with broken fragments because we've had a tragedy in our hearts or in our lives. And yet Jesus is working to redeem all of it so that the seeds of the Kingdom of God can take root. I was reading a report on irrigation from the state of Washington, uh, Washington State University Extension Office, and the, the study concluded with this sentence, and I love this sentence. This is the end of the report. It said, if the entire field is managed based on the needs of the soil with the lowest water holding capacity, the other areas of the field will receive enough water as well. In other words, if you take care of the parts of the field that has the poorest soil when you're irrigating, then all the rest of the field will get enough water as well. And this is true for living the Gospel of Jesus Christ. If the good news of Jesus Christ is true, and it is, then it is true not only for a billionaire living in a mansion, it is also true for a homeless person living on the streets. The Gospel is true for us all. And so if the entire Kingdom of Heaven is managed based on the needs of the least of the Kingdom of Heaven, then everybody's needs are going to be met as well. And that's when we will know that God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 429, Jesus Loves Me.
Please be seated. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The offering plates are in the back uh, at the entrance doors, so let's stand and sing the doxology. Let's ask God to bless the offering for the work of his kingdom. Gracious God, in this holy moment, make us aware of all we have received and so have yet to share. Let your generosity flow through us so that our lives will be gifts given freely and abundantly in joy and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. I think it's number 483. It is all right. This is kind of a neat prayer. It comes from the country of Kenya. It's a prayer for truth. From the cowardice that shrinks from new truth, from the laziness that is content with half-truths, from the arrogance that thinks it knows all truth, good God, deliver us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go in peace.